Welcome to the Night Club, guys. It's your host, the Night Wrencher. Now, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set the idle on a four corner idle carburetor. The carburetor in question today is actually my Demon 625. This is the same carburetor that was on my 5.3 LS in my Dodge truck. This is now on a 1973 uh, Plymouth Duster. I don't do a lot of videos with this car in it just because, you know, it's pretty much done, so we don't really do anything. Uh, with it if you guys want to see more of this just feel free to let me know in the comments below the question today is setting up the four corner idle I went ahead and I installed it. I had some issues uh, with it flooding. It was bleeding out the top a whole lot um, I went out uh, to the parts store and I picked up uh, just a little cheapy Holly regulator. I just kind of routed it real quick just the way um, you know, Jerry rigged it. I'm not going to be driving it on the street like this, but it's just chilling here just to get the fuel pressure where I need it to be before I start all the tuning. Uh, the next thing I did was I actually set the floats. If you guys remember, I did a video on setting up your carburetor for off-road. So I had both flo front and float set really low. Your float height um, tends to... What the... Be quiet, I'm filming. Your float height tends to uh, affect your idle AFR air fuel ratio uh, dramatically. So you want to have your float set right where you need to. If you don't have sight plugs, you want to set them up so that when your car is idling, you're going to want to set it so that it's just barely spilling over. If you have sight plugs, go ahead and set them in the middle of the, of the see-through sight plugs. Uh, if you can't get your car to idle, go ahead and turn up the idle speed screw down at the end over there. Uh, let me show you guys where it's at. This is where a lot of people try to set up their idle and it ends up just ruining the whole carburetor experience. So a lot of people s set up their idle using this uh, idle speed screw. That is not the correct way to set that up. Uh, go ahead and just turn it up just to get the car to idle because you won't be sitting on the transition idle transition circuit. You're probably going to be sitting more toward the transition main jet circuit. And in which case you won't really be uh, setting up your idle so you're going to, just to get your float set, go ahead and just turn it up. Get it around 1,500, 2,000 RPMs. Let it fully warm up. While you're letting it warm up, set your floats. I'll leave uh, setting your floats up for another video. After you set your floats up front and back, then you, you're you going to go ahead and start tuning. So I'm going to finish setting up my back float because I'm not finished uh, setting that one up yet. I'm going to set that, and then we're going to have this thing idling. And then I'm going to show you how I end up doing this. Okay, so I've got it all squared away now. I've already made sure that there's no leaks. Not only no leaks externally, like outside dripping onto the manifold, but also inside. You want to look inside your barrels, make sure that it's not dripping fuel. I had an issue like that where, it, actually on this carburetor, where fuel was just, they would drip, 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 and it was a bad O-ring on the needle and seat, bypassing it, overfilling my bowl, and feeding it through the through the uh, boosters but you, re you really couldn't notice it you just knew that it was running rich right now I've already checked that there's no leaks in, uh, uh, internally there's no leaks externally so what I'm gonna do one by one the idle uh, adjustment screws I'm gonna set them all the way in and I'm gonna bring them out one and a half turns all four sides are gonna be brought in uh, all the way in and then one and a half turns. I'm gonna do that while it's off and then I'm gonna go ahead and restart it I'm gonna make sure I keep the idle up so it doesn't have a hard time starting up Okay, so I've already screwed in all four corners all the way in and back them back out one and a half Turns what I did notice is the ones in the front were already close to one and a half when I pulled them in and I pulled them back out the ones in the back were about one full turn out and then I put them all the way in and then brought them back out one and a half turns. We're going to get a little bit technical right here. So the front throttle blades typically are more open than the rear throttle blades. That's almost always the case, 99.9%, .9%, especially if you've never touched a carburetor. On a four corner idle, the rears will be either closed or just a hair like a millimeter open and the front will be a, a significantly more open than the rears also when you're setting up idle speed you tend to uh, set it up with the primaries the reason that's important is because on the primary side you're going to have more um, fuel going into the idle uh, mixture than you are on the back so the, like I said earlier we had one and a half in the front one in the rear 
So the reason for that is that the rear had less throttle opening than the front. I don't know what this engine's gonna like, so I just went one and a half all the way across the board. That it's easy to keep the engine running when it's over fueling than it is when it's under fueling, so you wanna keep it rich. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna keep the idle speed going lower and lower and lower and then readjust as I'm going along. The reason I'm going to be readjusting, if you guys have seen my other video about setting up idle transition circuits, you're gonna know that the idle feed restrictors feed the entire idle circuit. So as the throttle blade is closing, you're also closing the amount of fuel that's traveling through the idle feed restrictors. Because of that, after you make your initial adjustment to get it to run smooth, I'm gonna go ahead and start turning down the idle and start until it starts running rough. Then I'm gonna readjust and I'm gonna keep turning down the idle until I reach roughly around 800 RPMs. I don't have a tack on this. I don't have an AFR on this. It's all gonna be done by ear, but we all pretty much know what 800 RPMs kind of sounds like. So we're gonna get it that low and I'm gonna to try to get it as smooth as I can. So you're gonna see me jump front to back, front to back, front to back until we get something good. So basically we're gonna start setting the idle speed down until it starts running rough. Then we're gonna adjust it, then we're gonna set it back down, then we're gonna adjust and set it back down. The rears will only adjust so far and the fronts will require a little bit more adjustment here and there, uh, mainly because we are moving the uh, front and not the back. The front typically doesn't affect the back too much, but you never know. This is on a one inch spacer. Uh, it doesn't affect too much. Just keep in mind the final results on mine aren't going to be exactly on yours. I'm just showing you guys a generic way of doing it. Like I said, basics first, no internal leaks, no external leaks. Make sure your floats are set before we get started. All right, so let's start the adjustments. Let's see if we can get this car started. It should start right up because it's, it turned off fairly easily. So let's, uh, no pumping or anything required. It should just start up because it's already warm. That reminds me, don't adjust your idle while it's cold. Always adjust your idle uh, as at operating temperature. If you need to uh, turn it up to about 1500 RPMs, drive around the block, leave it idling for a bit. You don't want to set your final idle while it's cold because as soon as you uh, warm it up or you could take it for a drive or you really warm it up your air fuel readings are going to change and it's going to start running rough when it's hot you want it to run good when it's hot you want it to run okay when it's cold this particular carburetor doesn't have a choke so let's go ahead it's already warm so let's get started okay so it's idling it's a little choppy but it's idling so what i'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the idle until it starts running really rough. Okay, it's not running too bad, but it is choppy a little bit. So I'm gonna try to turn in the back ones a quarter turn at a time. The idle cleaned up a little bit. It's gonna take about a second or two for the carburetor to respond. So I went a quarter turn on that side. You wanna keep the backs the same to each other and the fronts the same to each other. And if it's on a dual plane, uh, one side will need to be a little bit more rich than the other side. So this is going in another quarter inch. Idle cleaned up a little bit. Let's go to the front. Let's go in a quarter inch or a quarter turn. Why do you keep saying quarter inch? So on all four sides, we're at about a one and a one and a quarter right now. So we're gonna go ahead and drop it some more. It's running okay, not great. Okay. So let's see. Let's see what this thing wants. Let's try to take some fuel away from the back. All right, let's put it back. Let's add some fuel. No change. So we're gonna believe that where it was. Let's try the other side. We're gonna try to add fuel, and then we're gonna try to take away fuel. So this is adding fuel. Maximum of a change. 
We're gonna take away fuel. Not too much of a change. Let's go to the front. Let's try to take away fuel. Try to add fuel. All right, the idle got better by taking away fuel. So let's go ahead and close the other side. Another quarter turn to keep it even with the other side. Let's go another quarter turn. That's three quarters of a turn. I don't know if you guys can tell, but the idle is getting better. Oh, there we go. We're about at three quarters of a turn so far. Let's take a little bit more fuel away. Ooh, significantly better. All right. Let's try to take it away from this side as well. Another quarter turn. There we go. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's running really smooth. If I was to guess, I'd probably say we're about 800 RPMs. Just to make sure, let's take away some more fuel from the back. And it did get even cleaner. There we go. Beautiful. We're gonna go through and do the same procedure again if I drop the idle down even further. So what I'm trying to do with this, I'm trying to make it as lean as I can without it having any kind of issues. How do you know if you're too lean? Because your exhaust is gonna start popping. It'll go pop, pop, pop out the back very lightly. Like if it was kind of like, like if you were popping bubbles and that's how you know your exhaust is lean. Right now we have none of that. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna drop the idle down a little bit more. did want me to take some fuel away from the back. It did not like that. Let's go back. All right, so the driver's side of the dual plane wants less fuel than the passenger side. The passenger side, as far as I know, is the one with the higher floor. So probably the one on the driver's, the passenger side wants more fuel because it has better signal. Let's check this out. It did not like that either. All right, I think we're good to go. I think, I think the idle set up uh, as best as I can get it. I think you guys can tell the difference that this thing's running really, really smooth now. If you're doing this on a two corner idle, then you basically do the exact same thing if anything it's easier because you don't worry about the back turn up the idle pull out the fuel start lowering it down start start running in your your um, your idle screws until you get a nice mix of both rpm and fuel so the ultimate test because it is an automatic we're gonna go ahead and try it in uh, drive and it shouldn't die and it should only drop a couple rp a couple hundred rpms Still running. It dropped maybe 200 RPMs or so. Sounds clean. Neutral. Drive. Perfect. We are good to go. So that about does it. I was able to do this in real time. 
uh, probably maybe took, including all the cuts and stuff, probably 15 minutes, and I was good to go. Like I said, there's no choke here or anything. I'm not adjusting any kind of choke, but it's all just fully warmed up, and you make your adjustments and go from there. Another note is if you're running like a very uh, heavy cam, like really lopey, needs more fuel, you're gonna wanna open up the, you're, first of all, you're gonna wanna get a four corner idle carburetor uh, because just a two corner, you're not gonna be able to get enough air and fuel. So if you got a big lopey cam, you need you need to feed it more, you're gonna go ahead and open up the secondaries a little bit and you're gonna open it up so you get, get a good uh, speed. If anything, you're gonna wanna synchronize the back and the front together so you can get the right amount of transition on both sides after you open up the rear then you adjust it the exact same way so that about does it i will see you guys all in the next one night wrencher out